Good evening, everybody. I wanna thank you once again for joining us and for hanging tight while we got started tonight. My name is Lindsay Heffernan and I am the Acting Assistant General Manager for Policy at the MBTA and I'll be moderating tonight's meeting. First, the MBTA team has a presentation and we ask you to hold your comments till the end of that presentation. Second, I'd like to remind everyone that this meeting is being both audio and visually recorded and will be made publicly available following this meeting. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few meeting controls for folks who might not be familiar with Zoom. Can I ask you to go to the next slide, please? We will have live Spanish language translation interpretation at today's meeting, and I'd like to explain how that is going to work. Um, if you'd like to select uh, your preferred, I'm going to actually ask everybody to select their preferred language. In your meeting or webinar controls at the bottom of your screen, please click the button that says interpretation. Then select the language that you would like to hear. Even participants listening in English should select English so that they can hear any comments that are being spoken in other languages. So I encourage everyone to please select the language in which they prefer to hear this presentation now. Next slide, please. This meeting also includes um, American Sign Language interpreters. Uh, the, the meeting host is going to be spotlighting interpreters to ensure that they can be seen at all times. The ASL interpreters expect to switch approximately every 20 minutes if at any point you cannot see the interpreter, please let the tech support know through using the chat. Next slide, please. We also have closed captions for this meeting. If you do not see the captions, please press the closed caption button at the bottom of your screen in order to get them started. Next slide, please. If at any point during the meeting, you have technical questions about Zoom or the accessibility features of today's meeting, please chat the tech support. That should be the first person available uh, in the chat option. And next slide, please. On tonight's call, uh, we are joined by uh, three of my colleagues. We have Anna Sangri, our Equity and Sales Network Analyst, who will, be who will be presenting most of our presentation. We also have Anthony Thomas, our Manager of Policy Development and Outreach, who is doing a lot of our tech support tonight. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, Dave Perry, the Director of System Installation, is gonna be available for any additional questions that may come up. Next slide, please. So our agenda this evening, uh, first we're gonna cover some quick background in, in terms of what are we trying to achieve through FAIR transformation or FAIR modernization. Uh, we're gonna spend the bulk of our, of our presentation covering our proposal for an expanded sales network. And then we wanna hear from all of you and we hope for some, some feedback and an opportunity to uh, address any questions um, and also to hear any feedback that you have for us on our proposals. Next slide, please. So just a quick bit of background, we can go forward one more slide. For years, the MBTA has heard uh, from our riders that we needed to update and modernize our fare system. And there were a whole bunch of ideas from the public about how we could do that. An important piece for us as an authority, however, was keeping in mind that we have many riders who currently pay cash on board. And by on board, I mean our Green Line, our bus and our Mattapan trolley. About 4.7 or almost 5% of our riders pay cash when they board. And nearly another 4% of our riders add value to their Charlie card, meaning they're using the fare box to add money to their Charlie card. 
this is an important segment of our ridership and we wanted to make sure that they still have the ability to utilize our system uh, as, we, as we think about how to modernize. Next slide, please. One of the reasons we are working uh, so hard for in fair, fair transformation is to increase our efficiency and our reliability, particularly for our bus and green line. One of the ways we do that is we open up all of the doors. Uh, so instead of only being able to board a bus or a green line trolley at the front where there is a fare box, that riders can be able to enter through both sets of doors. We refer to that as all door boarding. We know that all door boarding speeds up our buses pretty dramatically in the amount of time it takes for people to get on the bus and get off the bus. Um, and that we don't have riders waiting in the rain while someone is trying to put cash into a fare box and having their dollars come back out at them. Uh, so ultimately all door boarding makes for a better system for our riders. It also makes our system more reliable. If at every stop we can move quicker, our buses and, and our green line trolleys can stay on their schedule. Um, and that, that we know is really important to our riders. Next slide, please. Fair transformation is designed to address a variety of issues that folks have raised to us, our riders and the public over a number of years. And uh, we wanna make the system faster. We wanna make it easier for people to get into our reduced fare programs. We wanna make it easier for people to get a Charlie card, uh, particularly the hard plastic ones that people in, enjoy because they don't, they're, they're not gonna fall apart if <laughs> on you. We wanna make it um, faster to pay and easier to pay. We wanna think about what role the MBTA plays in a future mobility marketplace? How do, we, how do we link up other ways that people travel and make it easy to only have one way to, to pay for transit? And many others. This slide has some quotes from some of our writers about how we could do a better, better job. And we've been taking that all into account over the past few years as we move this project forward. Next slide, please. In order to have a faster and more reliable service, we are moving all cash payments off of our vehicles. And as I said, moving to all door boarding, opening up, the, opening up all of the doors. When the new system is implemented, what that means is that riders will no longer be able to pay cash at the fare box on board buses or the Green Line or Mattapan trolley. What we are proposing to respond to, to any concerns that there might be for our, for our cash riders is a vastly expanded network of sales locations to ensure that there are significant places and abilities for people, cash users to pay for the MBTA. So it's important for us, for people to understand that we're not eliminating cash on the MBTA, but we are shifting our cash payments off board or off of the, the bus and green line to allow for a more a faster and more reliable service. Next slide, please. At this point, I'd like it to turn it over to my colleague Anna, who's going to talk about how we have designed our our sales network and uh, move us through an incredible amount of work that, that she has done personally. So I thank her for all of her work and I'll turn it over to you now, Anna. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, I think at this time we wanted to um, engage the folks on the line here um, and just get a sense of who uses, who, how much do you use cash um, on the MBTA now? Just to kind of see who who we have here. So um, Anthony, can you mark that poll? Okay, thank you so much to everyone who has voted. Um, as you can, I think everyone can see the results here. Um, seems like 
there's always a variety of um, of of the way um, people use the system. So awesome. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Anna Sangri, um, and I will be presenting our proposal for an expanded network of fair sales locations. Um, I'm pretty excited to share this with you all today and get your thoughts and feedback. Um, as Lindsay said, in order to fully achieve the benefits of speeding up our buses and light rail, we will be removing the ability for riders to pay cash at the fare box onboard vehicles when fare transformation is implemented. Along with this change, however, fare transformation will be introducing many new sales channels above what we have today. Riders will be able to use their smartphones, contactless credit or debit cards, and load value via, via a call center, among several others. However, we recognize that not all riders will have technology access or desire to use the system in this way. Um, therefore, we are vastly expanding our physical in-person sales channels to accommodate the needs of riders who use the system in different ways. Based on community feedback and discussions over the past several years, we have made this a critical component of our proposal and the upcoming outreach process. We are focusing these physical in-person locations in communities we serve that are low income, communities of color and or underserved by traditional banking institutions. Our proposal focuses on fair vending machines and retailers, which encompass the majority of our new fair sales network. We will be greatly expanding our network of both to serve beyond just rapid transit stations to our many bus stops across the system. There are two types of fair vending machines that we will be deploying across the network station fare vending machines and streetscape fare vending machines. Station fare vending machines will mostly replace the fare vending machines in stations you see today. Um, you will be able to get new standard tappable hard plastic Charlie cards, reload your Charlie cards with passes and transit value, and process account inquiries. Um, these machines will accept cash, credit, and EBT. Um, streetscape fare vending machines are a smaller version of the station fare vending machine resembling a multi-space parking meter. These machines are solar powered and wireless and are much more flexible when deploying outside um, at bus stops across the network. The streetscape fare vending machine has similar functionality to a station fare vending machine with a couple differences. Rather than dispensing hard plastic Charlie cards, the streetscape fare vending fair vending machine will dispense temporary tappable Charlie cards. These have the same functionality as a hard plastic Charlie card, but are less durable. At station fair vending machines, balances from these cards can be transferred to hard plastic standard Charlie cards. Um, further overpayment um, at a streetscape fair vending machine is stored as account credit that can either be cashed out at a station fair vending machine or remain in your account for future travel use. Uh, finally, we will be partnering with retailers across the network to dispense hard plastic tappable Charlie cards and reload Charlie cards with passes and transit value. All retailers must accept cash. At station fair vending machines, um, as station fair vending machines require power and shelter, these will be deployed at stations, but we need to make choices about the types of sales locations that best serve our many bus, Green Line, and Mattapan trolley riders. As you can see, um, both trolley retailers and street tape fare vending machines have their pros and cons, and some riders may prefer one or the other. Trolley retailers will allow our riders to have a face-to-face -face interaction to purchase fare products, which may feel safer and allow for riders to ask questions. However, riders rely on the payment types um, and hours of our partner retailers. Fair vending machines allow for quick interaction and are always open and available. However, the outdoor nature of the machines mean that these may feel unsafe at night and the machines issue overpayment as account credit instead of as change. So now that you know a bit about all the devices we're talking about, um, I just want to give a bit of background on this project. So um, this is the process for selecting locations. So as some of you may know, originally the decision around where to put fare vending machines and retail locations was going to be made by the systems integrator, Cubic, following the MBTA drafted quantity standards. 
After receiving lots of feedback from the public, we realized that the quantity standards didn't reflect the priorities we heard. And we decided to bring the decision-making process back under the MBTA. When we took this back, First, we reviewed the past input we had received from a variety of meetings with community members and municipalities. Next, we identified our goal and guiding principles. We then decided on a methodology or approach for choosing which MBTA stops and stations should be targeted for a seat of a sales location nearby. After selecting these stops and stations, we looked at whether these locations are better suited for a fair vending machine or for a retailer. Next, um, we double checked our proposed network of sales locations to see how the resulting proposal aligned with our goals and principles, including having an outside agency assess the equity of our plan. This is where we are now. Um, we're engaging the public to hear your thoughts and feedback on how we did, and then we will use the feedback we collect to modi not modify our plan prior to implementation. After we have deployed fair vending machines and partnered with retailers, we will then evaluate the resulting network annually against our goals and principles. So informed by past public outreach, we identified the following goal and guiding principles. So our goal is to equitably locate sales locations across the MBTA network to ensure access for riders who need them most. Our guiding principles for achieving this goal are to one, prioritize communities that use cash on board today, meaning riders who currently lack sales location access or who are underserved by our traditional banking institutions. Prioritize, um, second, um, we hope to prioritize high total ridership. So these are locations of high use with a demonstrated need for amenities. Um, third, um, we, we um, prioritize Senior and seniors and riders with disabilities. Um, these are populations who cannot travel far to get to a sales location. Next, um, prioritize locations with high number of low income and or Black or Latinx riders. These are riders who have been traditionally underserved <coughs> by um, the banking and transportation systems. Um, next, incorporate geographic distribution. Sorry, <laughs> I should have brought water um, to cover need across the network. Um, recognizing the geographic diversity of our region so we can distribute sales locations evenly and ensure all communities have equal access. Um, next, um, prioritize distributed sales location types, including retailers, fair vending machines, and administrative points of sale at community organizations to ensure riders can access the type of location that works for them. So to select the locations in line with our principles and goal, we designed an approach <coughs> and conducted an analysis to determine where best to locate in-person sales locations to accommodate the communities that need them. So this analysis was informed by significant community outreach and by conversations with the MBTA policy working group over the past several years. Here you'll see that we've broken our approach to the sales network into five categories. First, coverage of locations of high network important. So these are locations that we are proposing have access to fair vending machines as a standard of service. Many of these places are served by fair vending machines today, but this category is expanded to include the SL3, SL4, SL5, commuter rail zone 1A stations and green line extension. Next, um, coverage of highest need locations. So these are stops and stations that re represent either the highest ridership in the system or the highest cash use in the system. Um, next, coverage of priority communities. So these stops and stations are relatively high ridership and cash use, but also serve low income communities, communities of color, seniors and riders with disabilities. <clears throat> next, we recognize that there may be riders who prefer to access the system using cash all over our service area. So we've also prioritized geographic coverage in our proposal, aiming to cover as many cash users as, as possible. Finally, we recognize that we haven't gotten this perfectly right. So we've reserved fair vending machines and retail um, devices to be able to respond to public feedback. Um, So these maps show a high level overview of what our proposal looks like across the network. Um, the yellow dots you see um, indicate proposed stops and stations where we plan to target fair vending machines. Um, the, the green dots um, indicate where we're planning to put 
Charlie retailers. Um, and the purple dots indicate where we plan to target both a fair vending machine and a Charlie retailer due to higher need. Um, the grayish dots you see with the white outline are current MBTA retailers um, as of January 2021. Um, we include these here because we assume and hope most of our current retailers will continue to be part of our network under the new system. These proposed locations will be used to guide implementation. I do just want to note our next steps will include ensuring that all proposed locations are suitable for a fair vending machine or retailer, working with our municipal partners to secure installation permits and recruiting retail partners. Um, the final resulting network may therefore not look exactly like this, but this is what we are striving to achieve. Um, at this point, I would also like to point out that we have a couple public online tools. I know this map's pretty small, so um, to, to uh, help, um, sorry, that were made with the help of our customer technology department. Um, and these can allow you to take a closer look at locations near you. So I'm gonna provide a quick demo for you here, um, but I also encourage you all to check these out in your own time. Um, oh, wait. This is my first time doing this, sorry, everyone. Um, um, I don't see it. <laughs> Wait. Uh, Hang tight, everybody. We have yeah. uh, we wanted to demo um, some of the online tools. If we're running into technical issues, we'll drop those tools just into the chat. And people yeah, can... that's probably. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Can everyone see this? Okay. Can you see this? Yep, we can see. Okay. Now. All right. Um, so yeah, we have two online tools that will help you to understand that map that I just showed a little bit better. So you can start looking into the specific locations you're interested in. Um, so I'm just going to demo that here, um, just to so you know how to use it when you go and check it out yourself. Um, so one example. Um, oops. Oh. You can see if you put in an address. So I use 500 Broadway um, in Chelsea. Um, it pops up the closest 10 locations to your location. So as you can see, there's a bunch of locations being proposed in this area. Um, we can try another one. Again, you can see there's all these locations pop up. Um, if you want to get directions to how to get to the, to the location that's being suggested, you can press here and either go on Google Maps or the MBTA Trip Planner to find how to navigate to that location. Um, so if you would like a broader view of the proposal, um, you can also visit the map view. Um, can you see this okay? Okay. Um, in the map, you can also input addresses and the map will zoom to that location. Um, so we can use the same. location, as you can see, um, it zooms in and um, you can click on locations that are near, near where you're looking. So for example, we can click this one, um, Washington out at Broadway. Um, you can see what bus routes are there and you can see that we picked this location because it's the highest cash and pool ownership. Anna, now that you're zoomed in, before you go away, can you just remind people what that key is for those various dots that they're looking at? Oh yeah. Good question. Um, so on the map, um, it's the same as the map I just showed you, but the, the yellow here are um, stops and stations that are um, targeted, going to be targeted for a fair vending machine specifically. The um, kind of bluish greenish one is for a retailer. So that's where we're planning to target retail. Um, and the purple color is both a fair vending machine and a retailer. We're planning to target there because it's one of our highest highest need locations. Um, and then the uh, the blue diamond is uh, a current MBTA retailer. Um, but I highly recommend everyone check these out. Um, they're a good resource.
just so Anna may not have noticed while she gets her screen back up, the, the links to both of those tools have been put into the chat. Uh, so folks, as we're talking, are welcome to go and find their own locations uh, and locations they're interested in to, to see what our proposal entails. We can see your screen again. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, how do I? I'm sorry. Um, I, we are looking at your screen of the preliminary evaluation of proposed locations. If okay. You can't see yourself. <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. I'm just going to stop share for a second. Really? Um, okay. All right. Um, in order, so next we um, evaluated the locations that we proposed. So that map we just looked at, um, we wanted to check our work, so to speak. Um, so we created this preliminary evaluation. So yeah. here you'll see. We yeah. Can't, we can't see your screen right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, I apologize. It's fine. <laughs> obviously our first run at this. Uh, okay. Can you see it now? Yes. We're looking at the map. OK. Um, so OK. And now I'm going to make this big. Can you see it now? Perfect. Now we're where you're at. Great. OK. Um, so the map we just looked at, um, we wanted to check our work on this. Um, so we started to evaluate our proposed sales network. Um, so here you'll see that the proposal covers 90% of all boardings on bus and light rail within a two to three minute walk from the stop, um, factoring in the ability for riders to go negative by one fare in the future system. This means that for 98% of bus and light rail trips, there will be a physical sales location within two to three minutes of either the start of the trip or the end of the trip. Um, so looking at only trips paid in cash, that number rises nearly to 100%. Um, just to note, this evaluation used 2019 trips and boarding data, um, but for comparison, we did look at 2020 ridership and found little difference in the coverage um, within a within these walk sheds. Um, so we've kind of talked through the proposal in general, but now I'm going to move into the implementation of this. So one important component of standing up a sales network that works is ensuring that we bring retailers into the network who meet the needs of our riders. Um, this is why we have created a retailer strategy to one, understand what retailers are near our proposed locations and two, prioritize retailers who better meet the needs of our riders. Um, so before our retailer becomes a Charlie retailer, we will collect information from the retailer on hours of service, types of payment um, accepted, type of retailer languages, um, type of retailer and the languages spoken at the retailer. Um, the retailer will also be evaluated for accessibility for folks with disabilities. We will then compare the retailer to other nearby retailers based on the information we collect. Compare the retailer's attributes to the need of the um, nearby stops and select the retailer best serving our riders or alternatively decide the location should receive a fare vending machine instead. Um, so I just, um, now I'm going to give you a overview of our next steps toward implementing this plan. Um, so first we will compile all the feedback we receive from you and other members of the public and modify our plan based on this feedback. Um, next, we'll seek partnerships with retailers and find suitable um, sites for fare vending machines using the plan to guide these locations. We really want to stress that locations proposed will guide implementation, but specific locations are subject to successfully partnering with retailers and finding uh, suitable fare vending machine sites. Um, we are prepared to move locations from the retail work stream to the fair vending machine work stream if they unsuccessfully progress in one or the other and find alternative locations when necessary while staying aligned as best we can to the plan. We will be working with cities and towns during this process and also coordinating with other streetscape and transit improvement projects that may affect where we can install vending machines or partner with retailers. 
Um, once we have secured locations, we will deploy the retail devices and install vending machines. And finally, after our network is fully deployed, we will annually review the network of locations to find gaps and make sure the network continues to meet our goals. So as I mentioned, Mentioned, every year we will evaluate our sales locations to monitor how the network is serving the needs of our riders and communities. Um, our current thoughts for this ongoing evaluation reflect our guiding principles. However, we are, we are still working on these and very interested in hearing suggestions. Um, at this point, we have considered uh, monitoring access geographically across the network, access by low income, minority, and limited English communities, access in high ridership locations, and access by cash dependent users. Um, for retail locations, we've discussed monitoring accessibility by riders with disabilities and hours of operation. But again, we are very interested in, um, in your feedback. Um, so our last poll of the night, um, Anthony, can you pull this up? Um, can you tell us um, which of these uh, you think are important during the evaluation? Um, this is a teaser for um, a survey we also have online that you can take to give us feedback. Um, Awesome. I think that's all the responses. Yeah, so it looks like um, the highest score is access by low income communities, communities of color, limited English communities. That's great. Awesome feedback. Thank you all so much. Um, and um, so this is one question that we have in, um, in one of our public feedback tools that we have online, um, which I'm going to get into a little bit more now. Um, so um, listed here are the main public online tools we have available for you to give feedback on our plan. Um, again, the location finder allows you to input your address and receive a list of proposed locations near you. Um, the sales network mapper allows you to view the whole network of proposed locations and input your address to take a closer look at pro proposed locations in your neighborhood. Um, and then we have an online feedback form, which allows you to suggest specific additional stops and intersections where we, we should target a sales location, um, suggest specific retailers you would like to see participate in the system, um, tell us about the types of retailers you would like to see participate, um, give suggestions on how we should evaluate our plan ongoing, like the question we just um, took a look at, and give any additional feedback on the proposed locations. So this is a great tool for you to add your comments, questions, suggestions on a variety of topics important to the development of this project. Um, and you can see the links on the slide, which will be posted online after the meeting. I think they're also in the chat. Um, and um, thank you all so much for listening. And I'm going to turn it back to Lindsay. Thank you so very much. If you can go to the next slide. So now is the point where we're looking for your feedback. Uh, there is a lot to digest there and what Anna covered. Um, some of the things that we're curious to hear about, anything you wanna tell us, but some of the things we're curious about is, does our framework make sense? We came up with um, principles and priorities. Is there anything that we missed that we should be thinking about in terms of targeting sales locations? Um, the poll question got to this, um, how do we annually evaluate and what should we be thinking about, but other ideas for you that aren't on that list that you think we should be thinking about in terms of the future sales locations. Um, types of retail retailers, what kind of retailers would you maybe not feel comfortable visiting or would you feel more comfortable visiting in order to purchase uh, Charlie products? And if you prefer a retailer um, um, versus a fair vending machine, Help us understand why. Uh, we think we, we've got some pros and cons, but if there's others that we haven't shared that uh, are important to you, we would love to hear those. Um, so we're gonna open this up for comments. You can give us comments tonight. And then in all those various ways that Anna suggested online um, and you know, MBTA accepts comments, lots of different ways. I think we even have an email address. We'll, we'll drop into the chat if you prefer to just drop us an email or call one of our community liaisons and have a conversation. But um, if we can go to the next slide, I'm gonna explain how you can give us some comments this evening. So 
couple of things. Questions can be submitted in the chat pod. Um, we're going to do our best to get to all of the questions. And I want to just remind everybody that all comments, including anything put in the chat, it will be part of our, our meeting record and ultimately shared with um, other members of MBTA leadership. To make a comment aloud, I'm going to ask you to virtually raise your hand. <laughs> to do this in Zoom, if you're on a computer, um, you can press Alt, the Alt key and Y. Um, or you can click the raise hand button, which should be at the bottom center of your screen. If you are on a mobile device, you're going to tap the raise hand button that's at the bottom uh, center of your screen. And if you've called in tonight, uh, you're going to dial star nine. Once you raise your hand, you'll be added to the queue with others who have also raised their hands. I'll call on folks on a first come first serve basis. And when it's your turn to speak, I'll ask you, uh, I'll say your last name or if you've used a phone, the last four digits of your phone number, and I'll let you know that I'm unmuting you. If you're on a computer or a mobile device, a box will pop up in the center of your screen and you'll need to confirm that you'd like to be unmuted before you begin speaking. Please click that box, otherwise we won't be able to hear you. Uh, if you're on the phone, an automated recording will let you know that you are unmuted and you may, um, commence to speak as soon as that recording finishes. Once you're unmuted, everyone in the meeting can hear you. Before making your comment, I'd ask you to please state your name um, and slowly if you have any organizational affiliation. Please remember to speak slowly, something I struggle with as we have interpreters working with us this evening. I'd also ask you to limit your comments to two minutes. Um, please just make one comment so we can ensure everyone has the opportunity to speak. Once we've got, gotten through everybody, we'll certainly give an opportunity for folks to make uh, additional comments. Following the um, Q&A, um, we will have an opportunity to wrap ourselves up this evening. So at this point in time, I'm going to um, ask if there is anybody who would like to speak. And I have a couple of raised hands. So well, here's the fun part. Last name of Blackstrom, I am unmuting you. All right. Hello, my name is Susan Backstrom. Um, I have a I have affiliations with uh, Green Roots and She Riders Union, and I will be at the RTAG meeting. Um, I have questions about the accessibility of machines uh, to people in in wheelchairs. Um, some of the machines are high like the ones that you were showing, uh, stand up pretty tall, maybe hard for them. And the other thing is, is that the current retail locations are, uh, are a challenge because they do not take a uh, purchase. You cannot purchase low amounts on your, on your Charlie card and they do not take credit cards. And so that's a that's an accessibility issue for impoverished people. And the third thing is I have about uh, 500 locations that I think that that kiosks ought to go. But um, you know I just know that it's difficult to uh, to put everything everywhere. I, I will definitely look at the map but um just really you know i need to uh i need to advocate that a lot of the, the machinery isn't in, in in spanish portuguese arabic so the machinery needs to be language accessible also i mean it these are challenges that the mbta really will uh It'll behoove them greatly to to address. Also, um, working on on like the idea of cash uh, into a bus is like something that you can ask your friend for. But then, if you're go not going to a bus stop with a with a cash, what's the what what um, if you if you can't use your cash to buy a, a a card, how are you going to be able to uh, integrate that person into a safe riding situation? Will it be purchased further on down the line or what? I don't really know what this 
looks like. Um, those are those are some of my concerns. Um, and if I have anything more, I'll come back to it. Thanks. Um, Susan, I, I, I like to thank you very much uh, for being the first one to comment tonight and all of those comments are really important and we've recorded them all. A, a couple of things that I can say, because you covered a lots of different items there. Um, there will not be any restrictions on load amounts in, in the future, uh, which hopefully takes care of one of the concerns that you had about loading smaller amounts of, of money. Um, also, our new fair vending machines are uh, better aligned with operable height um, requirements. And we've tried to take that into consideration during design, at, meaning that they are lower. Um, uh, third, I can tell you that um, we have uh, language access for all of our devices at this point in time integrated as part of the design for the top languages in the in the region. So um, that hopefully taking care of some of the concerns that that you have. Um, but uh, I, but again, keep keep uh, keep keep sharing more ideas for us, and we'll continue to try to think of ways to improve. So thank you so very much, and we're we're documenting all of what you said. Um, I'm going to. Um, so we can also let's see. I'm gonna last name of uh, Fairly. I'm gonna unmute you and ask you to. Uh, you should get a button. There we go. Hello, uh, my name is Jeannie Fairley, I'm the ADA coordinator for the city of Newton. And um, I'm curious about uh, some of the things that Susan just mentioned, of course, so you took some of mine, but I really want to know, um, I think retailers, um, because I would assume someone's going into a shop and um, out of the bad weather um, to you know, find their money and buy their card, their Charlie card. So the Charlie retailers are, I think, are very important, especially for people with disabilities. The other thing is, um, how uh, it, how are you determining that a Charlie retailer is truly accessible? Is someone actually going out to monitor and to see these um, uh, shops, uh, stores? Because um, just answering a questionnaire says, are you accessible is not um, gonna cut it as far as all the things that someone in a wheelchair needs or someone who has any kind of mobility issue to get in and out of the store. So I'd really appreciate um, your commenting on how they're going to be chosen and how uh, uh, critical um, the, um, the inspection of these Charlie retailers will be for uh, accessibility. Thank you. No, thank you. It's a it's a really important consideration and one that we've put a lot of thought into. But I encourage you to continue asking if we are if we are doing enough or we should do we should do better here. I'll tell you some of our our early thinking. Uh, not early thinking. We're far into this process, but our thinking at this point in time, as we um, have not engaged new new retailers or just beginning those conversations. Um, we are anticipating um, uh, self-certification, but then also doing spot checks with our Office of System-Wide Accessibility. Um, part of the survey that Anna discussed does ask some questions about this and leaves an opportunity for people to share more. And I would encourage you, um, given uh, both yourself and our prior commenters, thoughts about what else we could be doing, if there's, if there's something more that we should be doing with retailers in order to ensure that uh, our retailers are accessible and completely accessible is really important for us. So we are open to, to feedback. Of course, what the, on the other side, um, you know, if we find out that retailers are not accessible, it's, it's incumbent upon the MB today to either ensure that they, be, they, they rectify any issues or that they no longer be a retailer for uh, Charlie products. And on the, the back end, um, you know, I, I think it's important that we keep our keep a close eye on any any customer concerns that come up, uh, any any complaints, any issues. Obviously, uh, retailers can can move from accessible to less accessible fairly easily by having obstructions and aisle ways and other such things. So it's important that our customers uh, help help us um, as we monitor of sort of a vast array of, of new retailers. Any other question? Oh, it looks like we have a comment that came through the chat and it is, 
do any of these plans apply to commuter rail? Um, and so, um, Anna, do you want to talk about what's happening on commuter rail? Or would you like me to? There you go. Um, we did think about commuter rail as well. Um, so the principles we discussed um, and the analysis we conducted, we did both on all fare box stops, so Green Line, um, bus and Mattapan trolley, as well as commuter rail stops as well. Um, but the data for, for commuter rail is a bit different um, than for fare box stops. Um, but when you go on the tools, you can see which specific retail, uh, which specific commuter rail locations we are, um, we are suggesting. I think it's important to know that in, um, it's not until 2024 that commuter rail will be incorporated into this whole system. So we'll be beginning with um, uh, our bus and uh, subway or rapid transit system um, and then expanding out into commuter rail. All sales locations will of course sell commuter rail products as well as bus and, and subway products. And um, some commuter rail stations will get fare vending machines um, and or commuter rail stations will be evaluated for any retailers near them. Um, so in some cases, those are those are very easy to identify. In other cases, based on our commuter rail locations, a little less so. Um, at this point, I would welcome people to either drop other questions in the chat if they have any for us, or to raise their hand in order to make a make a comment or ask a question. Or Anna and I can keep playing with maps. We can do that too. Uh, oh, great. Um, and um, fairly love, I, you should be able to unmute now. Oh, maybe I didn't click the button right. Can you unmute? Hi there again, sorry. I, <laughs> I don't wanna jump in if someone else had a uh, thought, but um, uh, the other thing I was really, um, where, where are those meeting tool, online meeting tools? Because looking at a map, I'm blind and um, it doesn't help for me to figure out all the colored dots. I don't see color, don't see the map. Um, yeah. And I know you said there was a way to type in an address, which probably would help. But again, if it shows up um, just dots again, that's not going to help. So tell me how the meeting, um, meeting tool, I'm okay. The <laughs> online tool for, um, figuring out where the nearest uh, vending machine outdoors by a bus stop or in a Charlie retailer place. You got will it. Tell me. Thanks. No problem. So um, I'm going to ask our uh, tech support to put into the chat the um, first tool that Anna showed, which doesn't have the little colored dots. Um, and that first tool allows you to type in an address and it will uh, provide a list of, of close and close by geography uh, lo locations. And then for each one of those, you, know, you should be able to then identify it's going to, um, that, that tool should be screen reader accessible. Um, so I, I, I hope that might, that might aid, aid, aid here, um, but it's going to tell you, it's gonna provide a location. It's gonna tell you how far away that location is from the address that you put in. It's gonna tell you if it is a, if we're proposing either a retail, a fair vending machine, or both. And it's also going to tell you what um, MBTA service options are local to that area. So if it's a bus, it's the Route 111, you're by, you're by the 111. So it's going to hope, hopefully orient to uh, what, else, what else is there. Um, and they should have, it's been put back into the chat, I believe. And so you should be able to click on that link directly. But in addition, um, if we go forward a couple of slides, I can make sure that's up on the screen in case that's easier to see. I think one more slide has them. Oh, no, it's back. I'm sorry. And I, I forgot you're back on your, your this is the slide that had uh, the future tools. One more. There we go. And so um, now that I'm seeing that this is in green text, that maybe isn't as helpful. We'll make that darker for the for the future. But that is the very first web address, mbta.com backslash fair dash transformation backslash proposed dash sales dash locations. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you for letting us know. Um, okay, 
Let's see, I think we have another question coming into the chat. Um, uh, and I'm not, okay. I think the question is, uh, you say few meds to vending machines from start and of ends and starts vary a lot. How will Charlie cards work? Will retail profit from vending machines or not? Uh, lose money or time, a grocery store in South Boston stopped EBT, said the machines are too expensive. So I, I think what this question is getting at, a couple of, couple of things we're working on. Certainly we're, we're working on a strategy to secure um, adequate and sufficient retail locations. Um, and we are currently exploring what kind of commission structure would allow uh, we want a retailer to stay part of our network. Um, and so that is that is important. We don't want to lose lose retailers because they think they, they don't see value in being um, part of the MBTA system. Um, I don't know that's where the question is getting, but um, uh, EBT cards are certainly one other way that folks can um, purchase uh, Charlie products in the future. And I see our tech support has turned his camera on. So I'm wondering if he has some more to offer. Anthony. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Lindsay. Um, and thank you, uh, Ms. Baxter, for the question. Um, yeah, we've been working with um, retailers to make sure that we are um, working with them to ensure that um, uh, they'll be able to make a little bit of money um, off of this partnership, um, while we're also making sure that our writers can continue to access the system. Um, and so, like Lindsay said, we're uh, exploring a commission structure and a commission rate um, that will um, allow uh, them to um, uh, to join the system. As well, one of the things that we're really excited about is that we've been able to redesign our retail devices. Uh, our current retail devices are the size of large desktop computers. Um, and in the future, they'll be the size of kind of a, a small smartphone. So that's something that we're really excited about because we heard from our retail partners that the size of, uh, of the device was a limit, limiting factor as well. And so we've worked on redesigning that to make it uh, such that it uses less counter space as well. So we're really excited about the opportunities that uh, were provided in the new system um, and looking forward to starting to establish uh, relationships with retailers. Thank you, Anthony. Um, okay. Any other questions for us? You can either, I wanna um, certainly take a moment and uh, let, let people jump in here, but I also wanna thank all of you for being with us this evening, for spending time with us. Um, I strongly encourage you to give us, give us more feedback. Uh, we, we really do listen to it. It's the feedback that we received uh, in years past that help us get to where we are today. Um, and it's, it's important that we continue to be better. Um, I have uh, last name Backstrom, I'm gonna unmute you. Okay, one final uh, question that I have is um, I'm, uh, I'm wondering if you are going to uh, if you are going to connect with the our tag and connect with the people um, the diff the, dis the disability community and if you're planning on uh, sharing this information um, making the video and uh, and questions available. Absolutely, Hi. and I see Anthony's back. <laughs> Hello again, um, uh, absolutely. Um, we are working on scheduling some time with uh, our tag and uh, the Boston Center for Independent Living to discuss this topic, um, as well as other community-based organizations and ad advocacy groups around the region to discuss the topic. Um, we will be posting a recording of this uh, meeting online um, and as well as distributing information about how to provide feedback on the project. Okay, anything further? I think we already, and one of, one of the things I do want to note is that um, there was user testing done on our fair vending machines where we welcome folks um, 
uh, individuals with disabilities to test out the system. Uh, and so that's an important, was an important early step, but an important step for us to continue to look at and make sure that all of our equipment uh, is, is friendly and accessible uh, and usable. Well, with that, I don't see any further questions. I'm gonna encourage you all to take your, your uh, next couple minutes to please click to click through some of those, those links. Um, I'll, we'll have a chat open. I'll stay here for a few minutes if folks, um, it is seven o'clock, we thank you. I wanna thank our interpreters this evening. I wanna thank the other members of the MBTA team who are here. I really wanna thank Anna, who's done an incredible amount of work uh, to get us to where we are uh, tonight. If you can, and if you don't mind putting up the next steps slide, we do have um, another meeting on this. If there are individuals that you think would like to know more um, about this com coming up, and we'll also be talking about some future topics around fair transformation, including uh, proof of payment, uh, which is how it, in the future, people need to keep their proof that they have paid or their Charlie, Charlie card most often uh, and or their phone in the future world uh, with them at all, all times. So we're gonna be doing some outreach on that in, in April. There is uh, some uh, a paper posted online already about that under fair transformation. And in May, we will be talking about um, future fair rules. Once we have, uh, uh, we've really modernized our system, we're gonna be in a position to really th think critically about uh, how, how we could adapt to some of the concerns we've heard from riders over, over the years. And so uh, we're excited to kind of start to talk about those things as fair transformation becomes a reality. Um, and I think, um, I do see there's a question in the chat uh, about, ensuring that retailers, um, the retail, that some retailers make a lot of money from the lottery. Are you going to make it profitable or bring in more business or are we consider paying them? And that is part of the commission structure that we are, we are working through now and trying to um, ensure one, that there's sufficient revenue for the MBTA as people who are following that know that's an important, important issue, but uh, not having an adequate sales network is, um, is, is not an acceptable option for us. So we have to make sure that that there is a reason for a retailer to stay part of our network. And that's where we're thinking through what the, um, what the commission rate is. Um, we don't know that we're ever gonna get to be like the lottery, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bold aspiration. <laughs> um, at this point in time, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Um, a couple of us from the MBTA will stay on the line in case anyone does wanna ask a question with you without quite so many people here. We'll stay for a few more minutes. Um, but I wanna thank you all very much for, for joining us and wish you a wonderful evening. Take care and good night. Thank, thank you, Ms. Baxter, for always being here. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions or hand raised, so I think we can say good night. And this time I really am saying good night to our interpreters. Have a lovely evening. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you, great job. <laughs> Thanks, thank you very much. Thank you for all your work. <laughs> good night.